one of the very special things about collecting Star Wars action figures has always been the mail-away figure. Saving up your proof-of-purchase points and sending them off to some mysterious warehouse somewhere, and weeks, months, maybe a year later, a small white box arrives in the mail, and there's your Boba Fett with non-rocket-firing backpack. What memories. Well, while the Boba Fett may be the most notorious of the mail-away figures, it wasn't the first. In fact, Star Wars collecting started with mail-away figures. The very first pack, the early bird gift certificate pack, was a mail-away. You'd buy the pack in stores, and you'd wait and you'd wait, and eventually you would get the first four figures from the line. This was done because Kenner couldn't get figures out in time for the movie. In fact, it was about a year later that we actually got our first figures. Fans had to wait, and those with the early bird kit got to celebrate. In fact, this early bird kit was celebrated years later by reproducing it in the modern line, but we'll get to that kit in time. Most of the figures, though, that were mail away were advertised on the front of card backs, and they ranged from Ewoks to aliens to emperors. Quite a few figures were available first as a mail away, and then later would show up carded. I remember very much getting the uh, Emperor from Return of the Jedi as well as Anakin Skywalker through the mail away offer, and these were some of the final figures that I had as a kid. Boy, was I excited. Every time I would run out to the mailbox, and that scene from The Simpsons where Bart is now the uh, poor postal woman for his mail away. It was pretty much like that every day. Has the white box arrived? Has the white box arrived? I remember them. definitely, yeah, our mail carrier was not happy with me. But it was a really cool, fun way to not only be part of sort of the toy making process as a kid because you got to sort of select your figure. Well, you didn't get to select your figure, but at least hunting down the proof of purchase seals and mailing away, it made you feel very much in control of your collection. Because for the most part, you relied on your birthday or, you know, maybe, you know, getting good grades to get a new figure. This was a figure you could get yourself simply by mailing away. And this was something that was carried forward into the new line by Kenner. And the very first of these was Han Solo in Stormtrooper Disguise. Now, you didn't need to save your proof of purchase points from the back of the figures as you did in the Vintage line, which was really half the fun. In this case, all you had to do was eat a ridiculous amount of Fruit Loops. Kenner partnered with Serial Maker Extraordinaire, and now Toucan Sam was going to bring you your very first Han Solo figure in Stormtrooper disguise. The box featured quite a lot of Star Wars promotions, including a cross-sell on the side, and when that figure showed up, once again, just like in the old days, it was in that little white box. And inside, in a little baggie, was your brand new action figure you could include in your collection. Now, they never made a Han Solo and Stormtrooper disguise in the Vintage line. Luke came out in Power of the Force with the coins at the very, very end, but Han never got this chance. This is a fan custom of one could have been if it was made. And the idea of heroes disguising themselves as villains, while we think of Star Wars as almost creating this and making it one of the most famous incidents of, you know, heroes disguising as the bad guy villains. It really does come from Flash Gordon, like so much of Star Wars. I'll probably get to a video about this in time. But yeah, that, that concept of the heroes donning the, uh, the bad guy armor was lifted right from the Buster Crab serials that George Lucas used to watch. And, speaking of serials, oh, what a pun. Here was Han Solo, our serial mail-away figure. Now, uh, continuity-wise, this figure actually came out between Waves 1 and 2. But I saved it because I wanted to pair it with the next mail-away figure to do sort of a double video here. But I do want to make that important because I'm doing these videos in the order that the figures came out in. So this figure would have come out after the first A New Hope wave, the first wave, but before the Empire Strikes Back wave, the one with Lando. So that was when he arrived in your mailbox, even uh, after waiting for the uh, six weeks for him to show up. The version I got, one of the worst paint jobs of any figure in my collection. The pupil was painted on his nose, 
And because it was a mail away and I didn't get to select my figure in the store, like with 99% of the line, I was crushed because this was my only chance to get the figure. Years later, I buckled and bought one off eBay, and I still have my original one with the botched eye paint job, but at the time, oh yeah, it was pretty painful because there was no way to get a replacement. Doing Han Solo in Stormtrooper disguise is also something that makes a lot of sense from a toy making standpoint. I've been in the toy business for over 25 years, and I can let you know that if you've got a Stormtrooper in your line, well, the odds are you're going to do Han and Luke in Stormtrooper disguise because... You know, if you've got a Han head and you've got a Stormtrooper body, well, smashing one on top of the other, or rather, having one fit well and uh, swivel into the neck joint, is uh, pretty much a no-brainer for an inexpensive refresh or, you know, reissue. This was something we did at Jack Specific when I was on the Big Figs line, the large 31-inch Stormtrooper was easily reissued as Han Solo, even if it didn't come with the helmet. And I do not know how in the world we got away with this horribly butchered, photoshopped cross-sell image of Han's head on a Stormtrooper body, but we did. The figure wasn't released carded. There have obviously been some fan customs of what it could have looked like. This version even included a blaster, which the figure did not come with. It only came with the helmet. So if you wanted to give him a blaster, you had to sort of swipe one from another Stormtrooper. And it's interesting that we got Han Solo in Stormtrooper disguise in a few other scales before we ever got a carded one. Our first ever carded Han Solo figure was years and years later during the Build-A-Droid series. After, what, episode 2 and before episode 3, if I'm remembering my timeline off the top of my head. So while there were quite a few... Han Stormtroopers in the overall Hasbro slash Kenner collection, because this mail-away figure filled that spot, it was kind of that one-and-done time, and it wouldn't be for quite a while until we got that redo or refresh of him as this character, especially a single-carded version. Eventually, we also got a vintage collection version, which was exclusive to Target stores, And this was definitely your quintessential version with the best possible head sculpt. And he came with a blaster and a helmet. And, you know, so he was like your complete Han Solo, finally. There was also the version that came with the trash compactor, but that came without helmet and was also, you know, deco to have muck all over him. So here was your actual clean version on a card, on a vintage card, what it might have looked like back in the day had this figure been in the original 1980s line. So... It was cool, and it was very fulfilling to get him in the mail because it brought back so much nostalgia from the vintage line and collecting all of those proof-of-purchase points just to get a little baggie with a figure in it, hoping that the deco would be good because you had no choice. And if it was bad, by the time it showed up, the promotion was over and you were basically SOL. Luckily, all the figures that I got as a kid never had any of these deco issues, but, you know, it was always there looming. So next up, and in the correct release order for this video, was the Spirit of Obi-Wan figure. So not a cereal figure, but a chip figure, Lay's Potato Chips. Lay's became a partner for Star Wars in quite a few promotions over the years, including quite a large Episode One release, where almost every single one of their products had different characters from the new movie on it. But for this promotion, all the way back in the late 90s, when the line was still getting off the ground, well, Spirit of Obi-Wan made his appearance as beautiful Kenner vintage art and introduced me to the flavor of Lay's pizza-flavored chips. Never had them before, but hey, if it meant buying a couple bags and mailing off those proof-of-purchase points from the Lay's, hey, I was going to do that. It wasn't the same as proof-of-purchase points from action figures, but... You know, it still was the same concept and had sort of the same feel. Although I do remember being disappointed that the image on the back of the figure with his arms crossed and it was not what we got. I guess the figure hadn't been sculpted yet or was not finalized, so they only used an illustration to show what the figure could look like, letting you know that you could mail away and after 90 days or so, you could get your figure in the mail. So, and when it did show up, it was cool, but it wasn't in the pose I was expecting it to be in, based on the artwork on the back of the Lay's potato chips. 
Nonetheless, this was the very first figure of this character, much like the Han Stormtrooper, which was never in the vintage line. Spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi was also never released in the original Kenner 1980s figure. And capturing the ghost version of Obi-Wan as a consumer product was always something a little tough, and there were quite a few ways that different toy makers and consumer product companies have tackled this over the years. But our very first Obi-Wan was essentially a clear staction figure, meaning it had no points of articulation, but it was designed to work perfectly with your Star Wars action figure line. And as I've noticed here in the video linked above, what makes an action figure is not about points of articulation or material, but how it's designed to be played with. And in this case, it's designed to be a character in an aggressive action adventure, in this case, the advisor. Uh, you know, he may not be blowing up the Death Star, but he sure helped Luke do it, versus a doll is all about uh, nurturing play. So, being an action figure, and he was a slight retool of the original Obi-Wan, but this time all in one piece, and again, makes a great mail-away figure because it's very inexpensive, just like the Han Solo that was ahead. Now, he wasn't the first ghost figure in the line. That, of course, goes to the vintage Anakin Skywalker that first was actually a mail-away figure and then was released here on a carded Power of the Force figure in 1985 with the coin. And Kenner slash Hasbro has an interesting history when it comes to doing Force ghosts. So the original Anakin from 85... It was, it was a Force Ghost figure, e even though it was painted gray. You can see from the card art a few moments ago the fact that it was supposed to be the ghost of Anakin, as opposed to on the far right there is an actual Anakin Skywalker from the uh, Power of the Force 2 line, which we'll get to several, several, several videos from now. So you have uh, both vintage ghost, modern ghost Anakin, and then... Anakin, if he wasn't a ghost, I suppose, which is actually one of my favorite figures. That uh, middle one, the one of Anakin as a ghost, came in this three-pack along with a all-new Ghost of Obi-Wan and a Ghost of Yoda. These figures were very similar to the mail-away Obi-Wan, but as you can see here, the decos were slightly different. They had a bit more of a spray on to give them that shimmering effect versus the Mail-Away Obi-Wan was just in clear plastic with no deco hits at all. Mail-Away figures have to be done as inexpensive as possible. And as I noted, or started to note, ghost figures, or you know, force ghost figures, have been kind of all over the map. This one came with a lightsaber, which, you know, I guess until the Disney movies, ghosts couldn't pick up lightsabers. The six-inch version was done with both half clear plastic and half painted to give kind of a fading ghost effect. It was a repaint of an existing six-inch figure and also had a sort of clear-ish see-through material, if you will, kind of like a, uh, like a see-through blouse women might have done as his Jedi robes to continue that ghost effect. But again, it's kind of hard to pull this effect off with action figures. This one was just a repaint, as you can see, from a previous six-inch release, but with the clear plastic and the lighter see-through cloak, it made it more ghost-like. This effect was also done in the three and three-fourth line on an Anakin Skywalker ghost figure, although this one had Hayden Christensen head from the post-post-prequels uh, version, where uh, Sebastian Shaw's face got replaced by Hayden Christensen, kind of wish it came with swappable heads. But again, you know, with the clear see-through cloak and the uh, clear faded plastic with light deco helps to create that ghost effect, different from the full translucent figure of the Mailaway Obi-Wan, as well as that Jedi Ghost 3-pack that also had Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. And then, uh, of course, there's the very first carded version, the one I actually showed earlier that came with the lightsaber, so this is the first and only time we've ever gotten Obi-Wan's spirit carded on a, you know, as a single release, not as a mail-away and not as a box set. So again, kind of all over the map on how ghosts have been done. And, you know, you can see here, there's a lot of different versions of spirit ghosts that have been done as action figures, and there's kind of very little consistency, except for that three-pack of uh, the ghost spirits where they were all stactions. They were not articulated. So that's kind of your best shot if you want all three of the Jedi ghosts to look similar. 
And, you know, I suppose if you wanted this figure on a card, there's always customizers. It would have looked cool if it was released on a card, but hey, go mail away figures, go. They even reposed him correctly, like the Lay's uh, illustration.